Knox County District 12 has everything, and it's the most wonderful and special place. And then there's all the other districts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Patrick Brady. And I'm Orion Breen, and this is Maine Better. Better where we discuss community and connection for the Maine Better Transportation Association. Today we are with David Merriman, who is running for re-election to the District 12 Senate seat. Hello David, how are you today? Great Patrick and Orion, how are you? Great. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you were running? Running for re-election, I guess that is? I was going down to anti-war marches and marches for civil rights and women's rights and stuff when, when I was in ninth grade, because I had a friend a little older and he had a car so we could get there. Ah, transportation comes up right away, doesn't it? So we'd go down, and I'd be marching, and I just saw how many people felt that they were disaffected by the political scene. So I had to become an airline pilot. There was no way around my being a pilot, flying for an airline, seeing the whole world, meeting everybody I possibly could in this world with an eye towards how could I make it better, and that meant replacing those politicians who seemed deaf to everything. And... So all the time I was traveling, and I loved, I was sailing since I was a kid, too, because my friend's dad had a big boat. So I'd deliver sailboats, and I'd flown for airlines, had my own flying service, delivered airplanes, all this stuff. I'm always asking people what works for them, what doesn't work, whether it's transportation or human rights or healthcare systems. How can you run it efficiently? How can you pay for it but not short your people? All these questions were there, but I, so I had to go through this whole lifetime to build it up. And then I hoped I could take this knowledge that I had built up and do something with it as I'd always planned and run for office. So I got out of the airline at age 50, so I'd have time to do it if I was lucky enough to get elected. And I was right, almost right away. What are some of the specific transportation challenges uh, in your district? I'd say the roads everywhere are a challenge. Some of them, where they don't involve a lot of money, have been improving a lot lately. Uh, in the last few years, the center uh, rumble strips. What took us so long to think of that? But it seems as soon as we did, it was put into action. Corners that are painted a little different, curves that are painted differently. There's, there's some changes coming. Roundabouts, although they confuse the heck out of Mainers. Mainers, they, they might as well have a sign saying, okay, get as aggressive as you can. You're about to enter a roundabout. Rotary, sorry. But uh, they work all over the world. The biggest challenge, probably since we're willing to embrace ideas as they come about, is funding. And that challenge seems to be based by this hyper polarity of political parties I'm going to coin that. I never uh, heard that, all those Ps. When you come up with an idea, because a Democrat thought of it, a Republican couldn't possibly support it and vice versa. Hence, we come up $150, $60 million short a year in infrastructure maintenance. And every single person in the state needs it. Whether they say, oh, I don't have a car. Oh, I only drive 100 miles a year. Yeah, how do you get your food? How do you get your clothing? How do you do this? And I sew it. Well, where'd you get your sewing machine? You know, I mean, it's if they're not thinking very far ahead, I'm glad to remind them we need the infrastructure. We need airports and roads and docks. We just need them until we change our society back to I'm going to grow my own garden and can it because uh, we don't need power. We need transportation and we need to pay for it in a smart way and not pretend somehow magically we're going to get the shortfall of money. I mean, it's so short-sighted and absurd that we have not fully funded our transportation infrastructure, while at the same time, to answer critics, made sure that we are doing the projects that need to be done, doing a percentage of projects for the future, and making sure that money has a steady stream. Do you have any ideas on future funding mechanisms? Well, I was on the Transportation Committee for one of my terms, and we tossed out a lot of ideas. There was a, a set fee, which I mean, I'm not saying that we're not going to get a broad cry of you can't do that for every single idea we have. You can't raise the gas tax. You can't have a fee on a vehicle. You can't take money from the general fund. You can't take money from the turnpike unless they deign to give it to us, even though they're making so much money. And then they give us a little and say, look, you know, we gave you some money, even though we have this steady stream of income constantly. We have one nice road that's always perfectly maintained, but that's the only one that matters. You know, we're going to have somebody's going to fight against every single idea, but every one of those needs to be thrown in again. I'm not going to say 
I have the best idea because every time I put it out, somebody says, what about this? I go, ah, well, good point. That's why we need a group of people. That's why we need a transportation committee to step up. But it should be one of, another one of those committees that's made up of some elected folks, but a lot of non-elected folks, because that's one of the big stumbling blocks. Seventy years ago, the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries was set up, has the power of law when the commission decides that this is the way we will protect our fisheries, and maybe that independent type of a board is the way. But I won't pretend that I have the answers. What I have are all of the different answers that can be put together in a way that folks grumble at first and then realize we don't have to try to pass a bond and then go into partisan bickering and then not get it done on time. And oh my gosh. How has the access to transportation or maybe the lack thereof, if that's the case, specifically impacted your life? It's so frustrating that to come to a place like this with so much natural beauty and then see what we could be doing and what's missing. That we've, as a country, focused on cars that allowed private corporations to undo the public transportation we had at the turn of the century is almost criminal. And then I realized we could start having autonomous driving that would not only save lives, but would create a situation where you could call for a car, come pick you up and be electric so it's not polluting and destroying the environment. Uh, so there are some other ideas besides the trolley system that used to come right up and down the coast, the ferry systems, things like that, that were ubiquitous and work because they had frequency, the things we need. I love cars. I started building hot rods with my friends. So we're putting big V8s in, in little English sports cars. And we, I mean, we had so much fun. So that was a lifelong passion and motorcycles and airplanes and boats and all this stuff. I, I love it all. But I would like to have all of that be minor, burn little fuel when I need it, and get on a shared bit of, bit of transportation the rest of the time. You know, many of our rules are based around transportation. They say, we need more public housing. Well, you want to do a public housing project? You have to do it within X number of feet of a large shopping center or store because we have no transportation. These are folks that need subsidized housing, may not be able to keep a car going. They have no car, they have no public transportation, they're stuck. Recently, with COVID-19, our cab service is shut down. My friends and I, uh, over here in Camden, kind of set up a garage in a friend's house. For 30 years, we would take our own cars, of course, we would fix everything, we would build custom stuff, but we would also help folks around. We had junk that we needed to keep going for them, we couldn't afford to keep it going. We kept it going. If they could pay the parts, we'd let them pay the parts, and if not, We'd find used stuff, or sometimes we'd just buy them the parts because they're taking care of a family. And, well, we have no public transportation, so somebody has to help out here. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite lesser-known spots in Maine? Well, anywhere along the Camden Hills is pretty amazing. These islands are like gems. Everyone has a different personality or no personality of people. There are three different waterfalls in Carabasset Valley that could be in any book about the most wonderful places in the world. The top of Katahdin is amazing. Yeah, Bigelow. Jeez, I get started. I'm trying to think of like the best and I'm just thinking of more and more because we have so many amazing places. What's the worst road in your district? There, we have a couple. The one is Gillette Road going through Hope to South Hope. You could have your car disappear in the heaves and valleys that happen uh, in the spring on that road. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us, David. Thank you. This was fun.